so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. On, uh, all of your wild success in talking about men that you fucked. <sighs> it's crazy that you started this small podcast, just the two of you really, discussing these issues, and then it turned into a live show, it's turned into a book. What has that been like? What has the whole process been like for you? Good. Man, we really didn't think anyone would listen to the podcast, to be honest. So I was like, oh, I was nervous about the title at first. So I was like, I won't tell my mom. But then there came a point where I had to. Well, she found out on Facebook. But it's Did you really good... just find out? Yeah, I got a text from my brother, and he was just like, mom knows. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, that's not good. So it was a, it was a good moment. But uh, yeah, we ended up having her on the podcast. So it's been a very crazy journey. Yeah, it's been surprising, but it's also been a little bit sad because we realize, I think, how many people don't feel good in their sexual lives, don't feel good about themselves or their bodies. So it kind of, it's it's comedic still, but it's also a little more poignant than we expected. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting thing. It's comedic mm -hmm. still. Yeah. But I wonder if there will be a point where it's sort of not comedic in any way to talk about sex and fucking because we've become so open about it. It's just like a natural, it's just like a natural thing to discuss. Possibly. A lot of the sex talk, especially on podcasts, uh, is kind of very clinical. So I think that's part of the reason for our success because we're like, we don't have to, you don't have to be clinical. We don't have to really know more than you or any, maybe we, we know don't. less than you. We yeah. don't at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned your mother came on the podcast. She has a, a brief moment in the book, yes. right? Where she, she writes a bit about, about her own past mm -hmm. without getting into it too much. You know, she's not here. I don't know if she wants to talk about it, but it's really, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a fairly powerful piece of the book that she has inside of it. Yes. Yeah. That she had some serious stuff happen to her when she was younger and she would have definitely gone to the grave without telling me had it not been for the podcast because she actually when I told her back when I was 16 when I lost my virginity I told her in a restaurant because she asked me and I was honest and she left the restaurant like didn't talk to me for a while and then when I found out years later she said well I was just so scared for you because you're sexually active I'm like oh could have told me that a while ago would have put a lot of things in a place I mean, I feel like, do, don't most parents walk out of the room when you tell them that you've lost your virginity? Hers didn't. Her mom's, like, one of the number one fans. Die well, fight. also, I just never, I mean, I never, I never had that conversation with my parents about sex. Like, I just went and had sex and Same. didn't, I mean, they didn't need to know. I mean, I, I just know I'm 32. I guess they just assume by now that I've had the, the sex. <laughs> you know? They assume you're a virgin still, actually. Well, I think at yeah. this point, my mom would honestly, if I hadn't had sex, my mom would be more concerned concern than that I've had a lot of sex. She you knows. Okay, Corinne? She gets it. Yeah. My brother was my brother was talking about like threesomes in the car with my mother when he was in college. So she's very chill. Your brother had threesomes and you Not uh, that, that 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 sentence was very weird. Um <laughs> I was like he was like, two bang two people Mom, you'll one. never believe it. Last night, these two <laughs> girls came to my dorm room. <laughs> no, that no, that is correct. I was worried it came out like my like my brother had a threesome with my mom, and that's oh, a no. whole. That's not for AOL, Bill. That's a whole different yeah. platform. Um, that did not happen. No, but yeah, no. Therapy. I just remember we were we yep. were taking a road trip, and my brother was just telling this hilarious story about a threesome, and I'm in the passenger seat going like, Oh, I didn't know this was on the table. I didn't know we could have threesome chats in the car. I didn't know. You never know. I was the first born I didn't take those risks <laughs> one of the things that uh you know right at the top of the book you talk about you know just a few months after you started the podcast you were approached by a publisher who wanted to have a book you know have you guys write a book but immediately sure. tried to sort of instigate these rules or push you in certain directions or sort of ex almost exploit what you were yeah, doing. Yeah, they were pushing us to be very salacious and very, like, talk about all the guys you fucked and, like, were they bad at it or were they good at it? Talk about their dick size. And we're like, Dad, oh, that's not us. I don't want to do that. So yeah. so this book came at a really good time because we had done the podcast for three years when we started writing it. And our inbox is a very special thing to my heart. Like, we get letters from people around the world all the time and uh, about crazy stories. So I feel like at this point when we got this book offer, we really had something to say. So... Yeah, How did you guys know when you first started the podcast that it wouldn't be those things that you just described? Because very easily a sex conversation, sex podcast can devolve into comparing notes. Oh, we were fine with a salacious podcast, just not a salacious book. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we're, I don't, we have this, I, I, and it, it's probably a misconception, but we're like, books should be, like, smarter. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a book. With, like, good points in them. It shouldn't just be a diary of, like, <laughs> Dear Diary, I fucked David, and it was okay. Exactly. That's more of a conversational thing. So when you set out to write the book, you know, being sexually explorative and self-confident in a world that's screwed, by screwed, you essentially mean a world that shames. 
Yeah. A world that's many things. fucked for many reasons. Many, we just many, couldn't many, use many, the many. word fucked again because that yeah, would have been redundant. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, from what I understood, from what I read of the book, a lot of what you're talking about is is shame, though. Body shame, slut shaming, all of these different sort of yeah. uh, prisms that women are looked at through and then look at them, view themselves through, which leads to a kind of constant conundrum of how women should approach sexuality and, and their own body. Yeah, I mean, women and men, I think, I mean, it's obviously true. this book, you know, is pink. So I guess if we're using, you know, pink gender is for norms, girls. it's more for gals. But uh, I think when we kind of look through our inbox over the past four years, uh, a lot of it, uh, a lot of the problems we were seeing all came back to this one thing of shame. That was the, the, the kind of the foundation of all of these problems that had escalated in different directions. So that we're like, if we eradicate this foundation, then everyone can flourish. Yeah, I always call guys who fuck the female Viagra because it gets a lot of women who listen to it, they're like, oh, I finally was uh, felt comfortable with myself enough to ask for this for with my boyfriend or husband or girlfriend or whatever. Um, but yeah, a lot of people, have you ever felt sexual shame? Yeah, of course. About what? Oh, dude, who has? I love this. Uh, sex, I mean, sexual, sexual shame, lack of confidence sometimes, mm -hmm. sort of an, abundancy of co an abundance of confidence that's led to miscommunications or, or issues. Wait, wait, you know? did you just say your problem was, was you were too, too confident? confident? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> What's that? Wow. <laughs> See, I'm so jealous. I think. Guys. I think. I mean, I, that it's sounds not, awesome. Tough life, walking I mean, around with all that confidence. I don't confidence. think. It, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a. Re, I don't think it's a real confidence, though. I think it's this oh, idea that like front? this is what the this person wants, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna try to, and I'm gonna try to do. Oh, that. so like uh, putting on airs? Like, yeah, oh, exactly. Okay. First time I had anal, exactly. which is actually just lack of confidence, really putting. on I was airs. gonna say. I was like, I think you're so confident that you interpreted your self doubt into more confidence, mm -hmm. and that's being a man. But I think that. Uh, that is being a man, but I think also being a man yes. is a complete <laughs> fear of not having confidence, not not having certain things, like and not being able to talk about those things are oh. really hard for men to talk about. I yeah, think, the masculinity, you know? like masculinity, it's we've disgusting. learned disgusting. Yeah, it's just toxic. And in a general. lot of guys feel like they have to live up to that expectation of masculinity, whatever they were taught that to mean. And I didn't realize that until doing the podcast. I was like, wait, men have insecurities too? Shut the fuck up. Deep. So it's been, yeah, it was really interesting to learn that we're more alike than you think. Yeah. I wonder if it's harder for, for, for men to talk about sexuality and insecurity than it is for women. I'm, I don't necessarily mean to compare, but I'm wondering if society has become a more open space for women to discuss sexuality, whereas for men, if it's not comparing notes and bragging, it's not really yeah. like If that. you go on Twitter, I would say no. Yeah, definitely not. But like friend groups, like my guy friends don't talk to their guy friends about sex stuff, but my girlfriends, we all, we spill all the beans. Yeah, that's and true. Guys, guys just kind of keep it in. I'm like, why wouldn't you? Don't you want to know? Like, what you got, you know? Yeah, that's true. Guy friends don't talk about that stuff really at all. And when why guy not? friends have talked about it with me, I've been like, I don't really. Like, shut up. What are you talking about? Really? No, well, because generally when guy friends do talk about it, it's the one friend that you don't want to hear talk about it because, <laughs> because of how they talk about it. Where you're like, that's a lie. Like, that's not. Oh, you know, you're, you're, you're either lying or like the way that you're talking about yeah. this woman that I know, I'm not a fan. I don't like you do talking you about it. Do you step in and say way. something and you say that? Uh, I probably just go, oh, I'm busy over here. I'm going to go over here now, you know? Right. Thanks Put for helping us. There. Yeah, thanks for fight. the fucking help, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> so next time that happens, we need, we need dudes so bad on our side, like with feminism and stuff. Because uh, we kind of thought like feminism was kind of missing a, a sense of humor in it. And, but part of, part of what will make feminism actually work is if dudes help us. Because yeah. the thing is, some men yeah. who like think women are less than, they won't listen to women go, we're equal too. But they'll listen to a guy go, hey, they're equal too. So we, we need all the help we can get. I'm on, guys, I'm on the side. I'm on, I'm, I'm on, I, I fight the good fight as much as I can. Thank you. I mean, we're not attacking you, don't worry. I don't, no. think, I don't, I don't think that you are. But I'm curious. I can tell by that blazer that you're not like so against us. Yeah. <laughs> you're a little bit on the lady cash side. Cool. We understand. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I understand. It's but what did, what did you mean by like on Twitter? It's different. It's oh, I mean, you know, I guess uh, the kids are on Twitter. Uh, I mean, basically, anytime a woman posts something sexual or a picture of her body, it's immediately sexualized. A lot of rape threats on Twitter. Oh, yeah. You know, just. It's a, it's a garbage place, but I think social media is a kind of perhaps a, a more accurate representation about the thoughts that are going on deep in that deep, dark web of your brain. 
you know, because you don't have, you don't have, you're not really held accountable for a lot of things you're saying on the internet unless you are a celebrity. So people just say whatever, but it's yeah. like, you know, obviously that's coming from someplace. So it's just, it's a, a constant barrage, especially for any women who are in the public eye. I mean, just literally look at the replies. I've turned off, I'm not even famous, and I turned off my Instagram comments, you know, oh, yeah. just because. Those are bad. Yeah, it's just, oh, yeah. it's just. And it's and it's not just women from men; too. it's from women too. Absolutely. Yeah. One girl was like, "I thought you'd be prettier." I'm like, "What? You, that's so bitchy. Why? Why would you say that?" Right. I mean, that wasn't necessary about sexuality, but good that everybody knows that. Yeah. So you can see my face; it's fine. <laughs> and even if it wasn't, like, even like, and that's the thing; it's just like there's such a priority on being pretty. Like, even if I wasn't, like, who cares? I wrote a book, well, half of one. No, I, I. Completely agree. And, and I don't know if it is necessarily just men who are disgusting on Twitter and Instagram and social media. It brings out the worst in the worst In people. humanity. Yeah. 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 We should really shut it down. <laughs> Let's do the, it. Let's shut down Twitter and Facebook. Just AOL against it. Twitter. Let's do it right now. Hey, <laughs> I'm willing to be on your side. We're starting yes. this. Start a hashtag. They're, they're going to be the first people to get kicked off the AOL bill. Yeah, search. definitely. <laughs> so uh, one thing that, and I'm not changing the subject for any other reason that, than the fact that I feel I like I'm uncomfortable <laughs> with this conversation. Then, then the fact that I feel like it's time to move to the next thing that we're, ta- that we're supposed to talk about. There's which someone is waving that, their hands behind me. Knock it off. Um, which is that you guys uh, are you're retiring a live show that you've been doing for the last year and a half. Uh, yeah. Your last show is coming up uh, at the New York Comedy Festival, right? Yes. Yeah. November 9th. Oh. What? Thursday, November 9th. Thursday, November 9th. Talk mm-hmm. to me about the show. What it has been the last year and a half, and what 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 people can expect November 9th? (sighs) Well, it's called Guys We Fucked the Experience, Mm -hmm. and it is not recorded, but we bring the podcast to life with the audience in it, is the basic premise. So So we we... bring guys on stage, and then we have sex with them. Yeah, yeah, and everyone's Um, like, what? You're a guy we fucked. You're a guy we fucked. (laughs) I like how no one reacted, because they're like, like, maybe that's that's the show? Very weird. Maybe that is the show. (laughs) Uh, No, we do things, like the first segment that we do is called... You're a guy we fucked, so I think that's so funny. (laughs) We're fucking you and you. Come on you're up, gonna get anyone. fucked, and you're gonna get fucked. Come on up here. You're now a guy we fuck. Go on. Wow, the podcast needs to keep going somehow. We're recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> no you one who knows me wants to do it anymore. So let's go. <laughs> guy in the front with the red bag. Come on. Okay. I would pay to watch that. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, we're gross, so we would. Yeah, we are gross. Gross and like we're like we're like we're female perverts. Yeah. Because I think. I think that's something where normally, like, occupationally, you know how you think, like, car mechanic, guy, pervert, guy. No, we're female no, perverts. They're... We're, like, we're doing it. We're breaking down boundaries. It makes you perverted because you like talking about sex. Ugh. Yeah, and, like, I always say, like, even if I'm, like, at CVS and I'm buying something and they say, like, the cashier is, like, okay, you know, put a bag on it or something. I'm like, that's what he said. Right. Yeah, right. No. Okay, cool. Or like, no, I mean, I really wanted to cat call people a lot of times and that makes me, I'm just like, but I, I, you shouldn't do, I haven't done it, but then you're like, I see where this is coming from. Cause sometimes if someone looks good, he is fun. It'll shout yeah. it out. Oh, I got a massage the other day and I was so offended that the guy didn't have a boner afterwards. <laughs> I was so, I was like, how did you not get as much out of this as I got out of it? Right. So. Right. Almost insult man, purse. If I was catcalled, I would be very excited if I was catcalled by Really? By Don't another let a guy woman. say that. Yeah. That's I would, so annoying. Because it doesn't happen on a daily basis. It, right. It doesn't happen like I'm not You're right. routinely harassed. It would be like a novelty, and I'd be like, thank you. Thank you. I try. That's really nice. But if it was a multiple Yeah, but times what if day, someone was like, bet you're packing in those pants? Yo, 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 feel, jacket, you I, packing in those pants? And it it's feel degraded and minimized. <laughs> right. and I would sure hey, blue jacket. <laughs> blue jacket. What's wrong with it? <laughs> blue jacket, let me see your dick. Like, that's rude. You're like, I'm just trying to go to the grocery store, ma'am. I bought a leather jacket once, and I was like kind of nervous about wearing a leather jacket because it requires a fair amount of confidence, I felt. And someone you was have like, it. Uh, I wore it once. I I wore it to work, and someone went... Let me hear the story. Someone went, nice jacket. And I went, fuck you. Because I, th- I, was, I swore be that they were boyfriend. sarcastic. Because yeah, you were so on edge about wearing the jacket. I get it. I get I heard, it. They were like, nice jacket. And I heard, nice jacket. Mm. Oh, whoa. Like, yeah. See, that was on you. Yeah, yeah. that was Absolutely. <laughs> That's why I don't wear it anymore. It's in a closet. <laughs> you, you have to put it away until you have the self-confidence to wear the jacket. Well, read our book, and then maybe you can wear that jacket around. That is true. Maybe read the book. So Do tell you- me more about Guys We Fuck <laughs> the Experience. Oh, oh. Uh, got off top. So, so the first we open it up with a segment called Seven Minutes in Therapy, and we like do speed round therapy. So I set my timer for seven minutes. And we have people line up uh, at the end of the stage, and we just try to solve as many people's problems as we can. That's very fun, and uh, we do a dating our version of the dating game. So the questions are a little uh, a little worse than the <laughs> than the television show, and uh, very uncomfortable. Throw which, one of them out there. 
uh, the, the last one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is my favorite question. Uh, so we usually have the guys on stage, and I'm backstage with the girls, so Corinne asked the question. And he, there, she's like, which one of your friends does your girlfriend want to fuck the most? And everyone's like, ooh. I'm like, you think about it. Shut up. You think about it. And a so, lot of times, they, that's the question that they get correctly. Yeah. And then everyone cheers. And they'll be like, Jacob. And then they're like, and they said Jacob. And then everyone's like, yeah. Yeah, she wants to fuck Jacob. Yes! And it's just this beautiful connective moment. Right. About how he, she wants to fuck his that. friend. You don't? Oh, because no. you're always going to look at Jacob a different way then? Yeah. Mm. yeah, but then you, are you seeing somebody right now? Yeah. Do you want to fuck one of their friends, like, secretly? Okay, really? but, but no, I'm, no. I, I mean, I, I, le- I legit don't. I would be totally honest but about you, that. Okay. I mean, well. do you, but like, if not that you want, like, if to, they were naked and like, but if they're sitting next, but to if your person wasn't in the picture and line. the only people left on earth were the people that were your girlfriend or wife's friends, <laughs> yeah, and like, and you had to in board. order to like repopulate the planet because you know, like, it's like post annihilation, like. I have to have sex with. Thank one you of these to people. you for sighing. So yeah, I, didn't I appreciate have to. it. She it's went. Like, I oh. sigh so much. Sometimes it's nice. Oh, to have I I, ag- to do I it. agree with that sigh. Like <laughs> I agree with that sigh one hundred percent. I just I'm actually in a position where I I don't have that. No attractive friends and your your partner's yeah. not there. Okay. Do you like well, anyone? Sorry. Is there like a celebrity you would want to have sex with? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure you were. Of course. There's. I mean, if I perfect. walk out on yeah, the street, <laughs> if I walk out on the street, there's multiple people that I'll see that I would. Yeah, that I would want to have sex. Really? With. Just walk out on the street? Damn. I'm this is New York dudes. City. Are you? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's I don't ins- think I fuck any of these people. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not right out there. Maybe not right out there. Oh, and that it, guy looks fun. All right, maybe. Her, she's cute. I'm just like, I'm not going to point girls out from the, for the camera. Oh, well, <laughs> thank God she's cute enough for you. What if we just flips it on you like that? No, it's fine. <laughs> she was cute. I was kind of expecting that because I was like from the camera, like pointing at women and objectifying. I would fuck hair. that one. I think you're reading that's too much rude. into it. Yeah. I mean, you're allowed to be like, oh, that person's hot. It's also, like, that's, that's up to you. So, yeah. Yeah, it's real progress. Thank you. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Uh, so how has it been for you guys? So you've had the podcast now for what, a, a few years, right? Almost four. Almost, four, Almost four years. You have a podcast called Guys We Fucked. Mm-hmm. This is a, maybe an obvious question. You go out on a date, and he says, what, they say, what do you do? Or what's this? And you say, I have a podcast called Guys We Fucked with my friend. How does that conversation I, not go? Believe I unfortunately <laughs> never had that opportunity because I have had a boyfriend since before the podcast. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I wish I had that opportunity because, yeah. man, would I? that would be the first thing out of my mouth. <laughs> Uh, I'm to talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't present it as early cr- as Christina likes to. I mean, she's like telling cab drivers. Oh yeah, I tell like, everybody. <laughs> I don't have the time. Like, you like podcasts? Well, you will now. <laughs> Every Dwayne Re- Reed cashier in the city mm-hmm. that Christina's ever worked with knows about the guys we fucked podcast. What if um, they all thought that was a come on when it? you were telling them Maybe too. Like they did. sometimes they do, but I'm so I don't. I, we've talked about so many difficult subjects now that I just have no problem going. That wasn't me trying to fuck you, just so you know. I, I don't mean to assume, but if you were assuming, now. <laughs> Hi, gals. <laughs> um, hey. For me, I, yeah, I mean, I, was, I only cute. have sex with comics, really, uh, so they already knew about the podcast, so I didn't have to have the conversation about it. Yeah, I didn't you say, say your pussy could book a great open mic? Yeah, my <laughs> pussy. That's a very insidey joke, but it means I only fuck uh, pretty untalented <laughs> comics. Um, Some of them are good. <laughs> so, <laughs> guys, that, guys that you really have got a leg up on, don't you? Like in the confidence department, uh, leg up indeed. Um, that was a nice little pun there, buddy. <laughs> oh, Corinne. And uh, I, so everyone knew about it, but I will say, like, it, it you, people were fucking you then, for, like, or would try to fuck me for the wrong reason, like to get on the podcast, or Wait, it took a would... long. Yeah. Okay. It's. A, I mean, it's a great promotional tool. Yeah. I would fuck people to get on pretty, like, less podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> Lesser podcasts. Because um, when do you have the opportunity to talk about it, though, with the person? That's kind of cool. Honestly, I wanted an excuse to call some of those people oh, that we interviewed. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. But it took me a long time. Like, it took, there was a four-year gap where I didn't have a serious boyfriend because to get a, like, not that I was, like, desperately seeking a boyfriend, but I did want a boyfriend towards the end of my four years of singledom, and it, and it took me a long time to find someone who was confident enough in himself to date the co-host of the Guys We Fuck podcast, so that was an interesting kind of inside look at confidence in, I guess, the men I know, not what, all men, what kind yeah. of, what, what did you find uh, in the people who didn't have the kind of, the confidence, what kind of questions did they ask, or what sort of behavior did they exhibit in relation to the podcast? 
Um, I mean, they were always very concerned, like, what I was going to talk about. And our intention is never to make people look stupid or no, bad. If anything, not. it's like we're usually making ourselves look stupid and bad. Uh, and we're great at that. So, uh, Like you said, it's not like that publisher tried to make you say in the book. You're not like, this guy was bad in bed. Or this right. Guy. No. It's no. not the podcast or the book. No, because yeah. that when you, when, you, when you trash talk other people, I mean, it can be fun. But a lot of times it makes Just you look like, bad. Just do it in private. Don't, like put it out in the yeah world. like uh, kathy griffin always says i talk about people behind their backs because i'm a lady i was raised right <laughs> and, I'm, and i stand by that <laughs> so you didn't so they would have they would have questions like that about yeah that. and also i mean it had to do more with like the larger kind of level that our career was reaching where comedians uh, a lot of male comedians didn't want to date a woman who was doing better than them and and that's not just something that i made up in my head like people said that directly to me no men really feel this way i i've, I have had conversations recently with friends who like oh i can't date this this person because they're like a, a producer in this tv show and yeah. i don't have a tv show yet and you're like what yeah. are you talking Why? about like just go Why? out on a date with them like, yeah what? you wouldn't do that would you I think I would do it until so, until suddenly some, something didn't feel right. I don't know if I would, would, it, would be like emotionally you? intelligent enough to be like, it's because I'm jealous of that. I don't think I would be that jealous. I don't think I would care that much. Oh, okay. I don't even know if it's jealousy as much as it is like an insecurity with having the woman in the relationship be like making more money. I think yeah. money is really important. Oh God, please give me that. Yeah, right? it just goes that's against traditional. I'm yeah, I'm like, who doesn't want like a sugar mom? Like, that sounds great. Yeah, mm -hmm. Absolutely. I would love to be a stay-at-home dad. Are you kidding me? That's yeah. my dream to well, have Husband, yes, <gasps> a house husband. I want to would come home, dinners made, like <sighs> they made the blue apron, so I didn't have to yeah, take the thirty minutes that it takes to make it. Sixty-five, <laughs> <laughs> and we just lost our sponsor. No, okay. I'm just bad at chopping. <laughs> what has been what has been the most difficult issue you've talked about on Guys We Fucked? The most difficult uh, story that came to you that you just really didn't know how to how pedophilia. To approach? Yeah. Pedophilia, because we have a we had a comedian friend uh, whose dad was is a pedophile, and that was a subject that we knew nothing about. So I remember I think you were the one who told me about like, oh, uh, this guy's dad is is a yeah. Pedophile. I do all the pedophile recruiting. Yeah, and uh, I was like, what the what? <laughs> Only me and you liked that joke. Everyone else didn't know how to react. I thought it was a great joke. <laughs> Go hang out at children's playgrounds and hand out pamphlets to like lone older men that you and see. And you just, took like, it there. Oh, I hope you moderate everything. I know. Sir, are you a pedophile? <laughs> Here you go. Are you maybe? I don't know. Here you go. But this is the thing. Like, even, like, the, the feeling that's in this room right now, everyone's uncomfortable because it is uncomfortable. I didn't want to Google it to research any stats because I was like, is the FBI going to think I touch kids? Like, I don't I don't want to even be near. And right. there's no, and I come to find out, there's no, there's very little studies done on that subject because no one wants to touch it. No one wants to be associated with giving money to the yeah. cause to finding out a what the fuck is happening with with pedophilia but it's so rampant that it's like we got to talk about it or else people are just going to keep touching kids and not get help and then you know it's just going to keep continuing and joking about it does make it kind of something that you're like okay if i just kind of make some like really really dark jokes about it that will at least open up the conversation so that we can ha then talk about the important things yeah because just pretending like it's not happening is not helpful and that's pretty much the way especially in america we've dealt with it for a really long time. And that's why it's great to talk to comedians who have experience with these issues who are w interested in talking because whenever it's a serious interview, we go by whatever comfort level the guest is at. So if yeah. they're cool joking, we'll go there. But if they're not, we respect that. And I remember Troy, when we, when we did that episode, he, uh, his father had molested both of his sisters. And, um, and he talked in depth about it and it was really, really dark and sad. And then at the end he goes... Uh, and we were like, did your dad ever make any advances on you? And he's like, no, I guess I wasn't hot enough. And I was like, <laughs> ah, I love you. Right. Like when you can make, because it's like that is so bleak and dark. And it's like, how can you not go there with humor? Like dark humor is my favorite thing in the entire world. Oh, someone more famous is out oh. there. Everyone look, it's Heather Graham. Oh, it's Heather, it's Heather Graham. Graham. Can we leave? Sorry, one oh second. Oh, Oh, she's so beautiful. She's so pretty. Wow, she's so talented. Yeah, hi, Heather Graham, when she walks into, into the... Into oh, the my God. Hi, Heather. Man. Wait, I where are you really going? Don't walk here. past. Oh, she's wearing like a little a little onesie. It's what? aqua, if you guys want to... Oh, wow, I've never really seen firsthand how photographers treat famous people in the street. Oh, it's very <laughs> strange. <laughs> it's very strange. They're just yelling at her. It's a weird thing. Oh, I would be such a dick. So would I. What? Oh, I would be very rude. Oh, man. So Good sorry you guys got here too yeah, early. Yeah, that was really, that was like the coolest thing. Ugh. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, let's get some questions uh, from the audience. Who has a question out here? 
Hi, ladies. Hi. Uh, Hi. So I just recently had a really interesting conversation with someone who posted an article on Facebook about a stripper who got raped and was speaking out about it. And his commentary was, well, she's a stripper. She must have been asking for it. Mm. And I know we've all had those basement dwellers like make those kind of comments. So what's the best way to come back at someone for making that kind of comment? Because I'm not really the most eloquent person, especially on social media. So how can I go about having that conversation as an adult and not like... What's you know, your normal reply? That. Like, suck my dick. Or <laughs> I would, I would, I always, I've, All replies. I've had a lot of questions. <laughs> or I have a lot of conversations with guys who have, who have, who have said similar remarks, and I always, I always ask them, why do, you, why, what was she doing that? that she deserved it. And I always kind of just make a metaphor that has nothing to do with sexual assault of like, like I, I wrote a chapter about, about rape in the book. And I was like, if you invited someone over to your house for pizza and then you put the pizza in the oven and then they're at their table and then the pizza's done. And then they go, you know what? I don't really want any pizza anymore. You wouldn't shove a piece of pizza in their face. That's weird and not okay. And that's assault. So, uh, so I kind of frame it in a way that just is easier to understand because I feel like a lot of guys, are, I'm noticing are like, how this happens a lot. This is crazy. Like I had no idea. I'm like, oh, do you at, like ask any woman who's close to you in your life if they know anybody who's been sexually assaulted, and they will all say yes. Yeah, and I also think <clears throat> specifically when you're dealing with uh, sexual assault and sex workers, uh, people have a really hard time grasping that. So I think for men, I mean, especially for men, like 99% chance he's consuming some type of work that sex workers are putting out there, whether he's been to a strip club, uh, watched pornography. So just kind of, I think they need to, people need to realize that these are human beings. These are not just objects that are there for their sexual gratification whenever they want to use them. Like that's her profession. She chose that profession. So she, you know, you don't go home and do your job. You know, it's, and then your body is still yours. So she's choosing to do the sex work. It, it, it just, there's no, there's no way to excuse that or just block him. I hate that person already. Yeah, he sucks. Yeah. But I think that's like, just like remind him that he's probably also consuming uh, work from sex workers. I think it's good. People forget that. <clears throat> People do forget that. People yeah. do. I mean, porn is so ubiquitous at this mo at this point. No one has to pay for it as much. The only people making money off of it are those who are building these platforms yeah. that are stealing the pornography. One guy who owns all the tube sites. Yeah. Right. It's Listen to the butterfly disgusting. effect. John Ronson's oh, so audible good, series. Right? Yeah. Amazing uh, at describing what actually the ins and outs of the industry. Yeah. 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 And it's a, and it's and it's horrible because now porn is so ubiquitous. It's just streaming into men's consciousness without sort of having to go buy a tape. Go like. There was like an element of like when I was a little kid and you had to like steal a tape or find yeah. a tape or, or a have magazine. a friend whose dad worked at a gas station where they sell porn or something. Did yeah. you know, do you know John? No, no sorry. Yeah, uh, but that's <laughs> that weird thing. It's not that it should be shamed or hidden or something, but it just required a little bit more effort and thought, you know? It, yes, it should be hard to get late. Like it's not just something that should come instantly. Like you, the fact that you can go on any website right now on your phone and type in any sexual scenario and there will yeah. be videos enacting it is is kind of insane to me yeah i agree next question hello hi so you guys are like these two badass feminists who you know talk about really taboo topics i was wondering if you look within like the next five years and you look back at today what do you want your work to be remembered for and is there perhaps any collaborations with celebrities like amber rose who does you know the slut walk and things like that to really bring you more awareness to the topics you discuss um, well, for the last part of the press, we already we work with Amber Rose a lot. We've interviewed her on our podcast. We've been on her podcast a couple times. We love her. She's oh, been. She's the best. <clears throat> I think Amber's a really great example of like number one. We didn't know her, so walking in, I think we had a lot of like preconceived notions about who she would be or or the the intelligence level she would have because of the, her media presence. And that was on us because she really, really surprised us and she shouldn't have. Like, why wouldn't she be intelligent? You know, she's one of the uh, most kind, uh, well-spoken people we've interviewed on the podcast, uh, I would say. Yeah, she articulated ideas that I just didn't even think to put that way. I'm like, damn, you're brilliant. Like, I love, I love her so much. And really a great example of like having that kind of sisterhood relationship with a lot of other women. I mean, you know, I'm sure she gets on some internet fights, but who does? Uh, but besides that, like, has just was welcomed us with really open arms and truly lives like anti slut I mean, it's not just something that she puts on her Instagram. She really means it. Um, and then back to the first part of the question, uh, how do we want, do we want work it to be remembered? Well, I want it to be remembered as like the people who listened to it felt 
better about themselves. Like if that if that if that was the only benefit that anybody ever got out of the podcast or the only good it ever did, I would be elated because that makes me so happy. And it also we, you know we have this thing we talked about in the book about shame is made up. And if you have that self confidence foundation, you can be impenetrable when people come at you with these things that a lot of times are probably projecting. So if if you can make people more self aware about that, that is like better than any anything that could ever come out of a project, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. question. Hi. Hi. Um, so did you, how important was the, your first time uh, that you had sex and did you get to interview the guys that you met? No, mine, God, mine is, he won't do it yet. He cheated on me, but I, I keep telling him, I'm like, it's not, I'm not going to come on and be like, why did you do that? Like, I really want to have, because I was so young and I, when you're like 16, 15, 16 having sex, like it's not good. So I really wanted to like kind of recall those those moments and memories with him, but he he has said no, but maybe in the future. I have like three guys that were really important relationships in my life that uh that I've been kind of poking at every, every couple months to and asking them and they always say, Maybe, just let me think about it. So uh yeah, that's he's he's a maybe still. So I'm I'm holding out hope. Yeah, and for me, I've also not interviewed the first person I had sex with. Uh, it was my first boyfriend who I had in college. We dated for five years. Again, it was a really heavy, important relationship in my life. So I feel like those people are the harder people to get on, especially when they're not performers, uh, because there's yeah. really no benefit for them to come on, and it's probably gonna put them through yeah. like, stuff why? emotionally that they don't want to go, you know, yeah. go through. And if you think about it, why would like a regular person want to come on a podcast that's like for like a hundred of thousands of people to listen to them talk in detail about their dick? Like I, I do understand guy. why they wouldn't want to. You just hear that poor guy responding to the question. So tell us what we did. Like we like, well, we had sex. Yeah, like, yeah. we yeah. were young. Yeah. Um, what do you yeah. want? What, what should I say? I know. But I just love, like, ugh, for everyone's first time is always, it's just, for me, it was very sweet. And his dad came home in the middle of it. And we're like, no. Like, there's a lot happening our first time that I really When liked. I was young, I saw Moby on a talk show. And I was in, like, high school. I can't wait to see where this yeah. is going. Yeah. I was like, yeah. And I've held on to this forever, which is that Moby said something. That he said, I, I, I'll never trust anyone in my life who says that the first time they had sex was, like, romantic and beautiful. Oh, well, then he incredible. wouldn't trust me. Yeah, you know what? what I was good, I was yeah. He also, I've also eaten vegan turkey that he made, so I don't trust him because that tasted like real turkey. <laughs> Touche, Moby. I've lived in New York for a long ass time. He had a he had a, a store called Teeny where they would like make Italian sodas in the back, and then they I had a turkey sandwich, and I was like, this tastes like a real turkey sandwich. So I don't know what you're doing back there, but I don't I don't trust shady it. shit. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so Thursday, November 9th, uh, for the New York Comedy Festival, you're doing Guys We Fucked, The Experience. Yes. Yes. People can get tickets now, or maybe it's yep. sold out already. I'm not sure. Yeah, they can get, it's not sold out yet. Oh, no, it's uh, not sold out. And uh, well, um, <laughs> make that very clear. <laughs> we really want to sell out. It's a big really year. need to sell this out. It's the biggest uh, we'll New York show out. we're doing. Uh, yeah. I mean, are you buying the, the remaining 300 tickets? Yeah, are you going to go? I've, I've had an assistant. No, I'm sorry. Wow. Know. One, I don't have an assistant. I could not in no way feel You don't even have one. That was a lie, too. That's yeah, a lie. Dude. And I, I felt really bad saying it immediately. Yeah, you did. Um, I like that. You could see that, right? <laughs> no, it's good. Well, my assistant. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. I'm yeah. full of bullshit. It's going to be awesome, but it's it's the biggest New York show we've ever had. Uh, almost a thousand seat theater. Where is it? And it's at the Tribeca Performing Arts Center. Oh, wow. And because we live here, I think we're a little too accessible. So yeah. maybe we'll uh, stay off the streets for a while. <laughs> You're not just do any you know, AOL him. build stages, <laughs> so maybe then you'll miss us and you'll come to see the show. Or you uh, just please buy a ticket. <laughs> Fucked is on is on bookshelves now and Amazon. People can get the book, right? Yes, audio book narrated by us. Tomorrow's uh, it's the release day. Tomorrow's the release. Yeah, yes. so it's so on. Pre-order it for tomorrow. You can the pre-order it or just tomorrow. You can go to whatever Barnes and Noble e-book, and pick it up. Barnes and Noble book. Uh, Your local uh, bookshop. Book. The, yeah, the ones with, like, book good shop, liberal, like, owners <laughs> that are willing to put it in their window. Uh, <laughs> in the Strand, they're a union bookstore. Do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying uh, to I guess said- yeah, someone has money in the strands. Okay. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Uh... Does your stock just go up? You get a little tick? <laughs> you get a little alert? I don't think they're a publicly traded company. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you there's would. Like, there's, like... Two stores. In I know. Yeah, I was like, I made fifteen dollars in my st- strand stock. Whatever. I bought a fifteen dollar tote bag from them. I didn't know why. I was like, why do I need this? I don't know. I like it. I, lo- I like I like strand tote bags. I do too. Um, you would. Smart. I know. I and and you the- reek of strand. Tote bags. <laughs> That's like a real smell too. 
<laughs> and you make sure the logo's out so everyone can see it. Like, Actually, I, I go sh- to the Strand. <laughs> it's got a book. <laughs> so, whatever. I can read, everybody. <laughs> uh, I want everyone to know. Uh, and the podcast, uh, you know, it's on iTunes. People can iTunes, listen. iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify. Uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, all the all the places. Is there anything else that we should that we should tell people to, to go see, to look at, other than the three things that we have uh, geared them towards? I mean, just make, don't slut shame people. Yeah. If they don't want to fuck don't. you, like, that, that's okay. That's cool. That's okay. It doesn't need to be a big thing. Just everyone has their insecurities, and we all have, we're all more alike than we think. That's something valuable I've learned. On that note, give them a round of applause. Let's hear it, everybody. <laughs> Corinne and Christina. Thank you. Thanks, guys.